This is Appear, an at-home bike fitting app that will help you set up and determine the best riding position for you. And this is what it looks like when it's using its AI technology to determine how you are riding at the moment and suggest to you some of the changes that you should make. Today on The What Life, Appear has asked me if I could go over everything that I think is good about their app, the ways that I think it's different to going and meeting a bike fit professional, and then also some of the best practices that you can do that will help you get the absolute most out of using an at-home bike fitting app rather than going in store for a bike fit. Just to kick things off, I'm gonna say that I've been given free access to the app and a free bike fit by Appear so that I can take you through everything that you need to do to get the best results possible. Also, it probably goes without saying, the way that this app works or at-home bike fitting works it relies on the rider themselves. So part of this video is for people that might be new to cycling who want to kind of really figure out how it all goes and how it all works without actually having too much prior knowledge. And I will try and break everything down for you. But as I said, I've been given free access. It is a bit different to going for a bike fit and I have some videos on my channel where I actually go into store and you will see the amount of liaising that you do between the person who is doing the bike fit and yourself as a rider. When you are doing an at-home bike fit, you do not get that same level of conversation. It relies on you. So your confidence in how you set your bike up is mostly down to believing in yourself. Whereas when you go for a bike fit, you have an industry professional who kind of tells you what they think and their perceptions. Even though I did find that when I was doing a bike fit in store, a lot of it comes down to how I feel. You are very often asked, how does that feel? How does that feel? And it relies on you providing feedback and then a professional giving you guidance based on that feedback. So firstly, I would just ask, how have you got on since having the first bike fit? How did it feel? Did you notice any changes that were good, that were slightly unusual? Now, AI technology is a little bit different and you don't get that same level of conversation even though you are getting certain points of feedback and we will come to that later. So before we dive into what you're actually gonna to need to perform a bike fit at home, I will say that I'm gonna set the app a bunch of different challenges. And that includes not changing anything on my bike and changing my riding position and see how the app responds to that and what it tells me to do. And I will also provide you with the best position for you to sit in and give you some guidance so that you know that when you're doing your bike fit or when you're doing your video for your bike fit, you are getting an accurate and proper result. I'm also going to do things like drop my saddle too low and raise it too high as well as take my stem too far out and bring my stem too close just to kind of see how the AI picks up on that and what kind of result it gives us and recommendations of things to change. Now we're going to put it through its paces a little bit, not too aggressively, but we are going to see whether it responds to these things and what the result is and just how well this works. So let's kick things off with what you are actually going to need to do an at-home bike fit. Obviously, the bike that you are hoping to fit, as well as a turbo trainer. If you don't have one, maybe you can borrow one off a friend, but make sure that your front wheel is set at the correct height. So if it comes with a front wheel prop, make sure you are using that because that will change the way that you sit on the bike. Secondly, you'll obviously need a mobile phone and you will have to download the app. In the UK, the Appear app costs 22.99. I think it's about 25 euros if you are in Europe. The next thing you are gonna need is a tripod. Luckily, being a YouTuber slash Zwift influencer of sorts, I have tripods lying around everywhere and I actually have a mount for holding my phone. The other tip is though that you can use a windowsill and just do the good old fashioned trick of propping up your phone to record yourself. But you will need a very steady video of you up against a nice light background. And this is why we changed the bike from before to all the contrasty stuff to this where we've got a nice clean background and the bike. So this hopefully should give us the best result when we record our video and let the AI do its thing. Lastly, you're probably going to need some tools. I have myself a nice torque wrench. Ideally, you would have an adjustable torque wrench. That way you can make sure that all the bolts that you are undoing and then doing up again to adjust all the positions are done up to spec and you're not actually gonna break anything whilst doing your own bike fit. This can be one of the daunting parts of doing your own bike fit. 
having to undo all the bolts and then retorque them yourselves. We will get into that, but the best thing you can do is grab yourself a good adjustable torque wrench. The last thing you're gonna need is your full cycle kit. Keep it nice and bright and tight. You're gonna need your cycle shoes as well because you're gonna be clipping in. You can't do this in bare feet and you can't do this in trainers. The best practice is to use the same gear that you are going to use when you head out cycling. That way you know that your cleats and everything including your shoes are gonna fit when it comes down to the end result. Okay, so let's talk about the app itself very quickly. You can download it for free, but when you want to do a bike fit, you will be charged 22.99 in the UK, 25 euros in Europe to access one bike fit, which lasts for two weeks. This means that you can do your bike fit uh, video initially, and then you have a two week period to adjust and make changes that the app might itself tell you to do. It's important to say that the bike fit doesn't start the moment that you actually purpose it. You have to click in and register to actually use one. So I have a free one from a peer and we're gonna go through it all today. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is rider position. So here's the interesting thing about a bike fit and something I need to explain to you. Firstly, when you are out riding on the road, you might find yourself in a bunch of different positions. Here we go, guys. You have a nice relaxed position you have a semi-relaxed kind of aggressive riding in a group position, and then you have your turbo aggressive holding a wheel, trying to stay aero and not get dropped position. These all yield different results when it comes to using a bike fitting app. And the interesting thing is you are gonna get told to do different things based on all these three different positions. Now what we want to do is try and create a position that is comfortable so that we can give an accurate reading and then build a bike fit off of that. So I would definitely say the position that you want to hold when you are filming yourself for your bike fit is more of a middle relaxed, easy position. Slightly bent arms, little pivot from the hips, nothing too aggressive where you're trying to drop your chest down to your bars or really break your elbows to hold an aggressive aero position. Even though that might be what you are ending up or trying to achieve as an end goal, when you're setting your bike up, you want to be able to ride it comfortably just in a casual, semi-aggressive, position where your hands are up against the levers. So the first thing you're gonna be asked to do in your profile is a body scan and then a mobility test. And they will look a little something like this and this. Best to do that in your cycle kit, which is nice and tight so that the AI can get the best results. You'll then have to purchase a bike fit and then you get to set up a profile for your bike, including make and model. And you'll be asked a few different things like your stem length and whether you want sport, comfort or aero in terms of your riding position. You'll also have to detail whether you have a few injuries. And this is probably the first point I'm gonna say that if you do have injuries or real issues with your body in terms of like lower backs, tight issues, soreness, pain, then you probably will want to go and see a bike fit professional because you will be wanting to fit your bike specific to your needs and requirements of an injury based on your body. So an AI bike fit or an app bike fit is slightly different because the goal within this is to get you within a certain range. So it will get you from setting a bike up into 85% of the way to giving you a really good bike setup. That last 10, 15%, if you are a normal rider with no ailments, can come from continual use, talking to industry professionals, and small uh, like tweaks and changes. If you have a big issue, let's say you have a big knee issue, then you will probably want to see an industry professional who will help you de decide on a position that is specific to that particular problem. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is actually record yourself cycling for 20 to 30 seconds. You can then trim this video up and the AI will do its thing and it will look something like this. The best thing you can do is wear your cycle kit, have your cycle shoes on and make sure there's a lot of contrast between you and the background. So a nice clean background and try and do it in front of a window so there's plenty of light. Give the AI the best chance of giving you the absolute best result possible. So this is the first challenge I am gonna throw out to the app. We are gonna change the height at which we record our video and I am gonna exaggerate this. We're gonna record it from what I would consider a very normal height, so kind of waist high on a windowsill straight on. 
Second one is gonna be nice and low, kind of like shin height looking up, and then we're gonna go for a very high recording and see whether that has any effect on the AI and basically whether that gives you a different result in terms of what it's telling you to change. This should give you an idea of the best place for you to place your tripod or the height for you to place your tripod. And this is just the first little challenge. I'm trying to see whether we can get a different result on and what the result actually is. I'm not trying to beat the AI and make it look like it is not doing its job. I am just curious to see whether recording from different heights has an effect on how the AI determines different positions. And also it does mean that if you are gonna repeat your videos in that 14 day period, you should always make sure that you are set up in the same position and same height to give yourself the best chance of getting a continually accurate result. So usually you start at the back for a bike fit. This is why we're gonna test having a really low saddle and a really high saddle and just see what result that throws at us for the app. So I will say we're just trying to test the app out and see what kind of result it gives us in terms of dropping the saddle down and having it too low. These might be a little bit exaggerated, go for a really low saddle height and we'll go for a really high saddle height and then I have my exact saddle height that I need it at. I don't know what the result's gonna be, it's more just a chance of just seeing how the app responds to it and what the AI tells me to do as a result. So one thing's for sure, if you are setting up a brand new bike and you are a little bit new to cycling, an app like this is actually gonna be quite helpful because it's gonna get you within a certain range. But what I will say is, it's gonna take a bit of toing and froing, toing and froing from coming on the bike, doing a couple of pedal strokes, filming it, putting it into the app, and then getting the feedback and making an adjustment. What I would say is before you start moving your saddle fore and aft, just make sure that you are comfortable with the height. So ultimately, start with raising and lowering the saddle. There are a few suggestions with once you've tried raising the saddle, maybe try moving it forward and aft. A lot of the bike fit actually comes down to how you feel, and people talk about comfort on the bike actually being the most efficient and fastest way to ride. If you are uncomfortable, you are not gonna hold that position. So this is the thing with an app rather than an actual in-person bike fit is you don't have that personable conversation that you can ha have with a professional that is gonna give you that feedback and make you feel confident in the way that you are sat on the bike. When you're doing it on an app, it takes a little bit of trust in yourself. So you can get yourself into a right position and you can get yourself within a certain range, but having an industry professional turn around and say, hey, that looks good. If it feels good for you, I am comfortable with that. It's something that you might have to get used to. It puts you in a good frame of mind and helps you kind of be more confident in your riding position and then feeling like you have to get used to it a little bit because it will take a bit of time when you change your position for it to start feeling comfortable and for it to feel natural. So now that we've got the back end of the bike sorted, we're gonna start looking at what happens when we change the front end. And I'm gonna exaggerate my position in terms of changing the stem length. I actually don't have a load of different stems, but what I can do is make my hands reach further than the actual grips on the levers. So even though it's not like exact, exactly accurate in terms of where my hands are on the levers, and we'll see what result that gives us in terms of what the app and the AI is telling us to change. We are trying to mimic changing the stem length and just seeing the results that we are given for that. So what have we found out from today? Firstly, the height at which you record your video is very important and I will emphasize that if you are going to record a video for analysis and then come back a week later, try and make sure that the conditions are very similar, if not exactly the same. So the height of the phone at which you record yourself does play a bit of a role in how the AI looks at your body angles. Secondly, we have learned that we wanna start at the back of the bike and worry about saddle height and saddle fore aft. These are little details that are emphasized in the app. It will tell you to raise your saddle before you start worrying about saddle fore and aft. Start at the back and work your way forward. We've learned that some things aren't picked up in the app, like handlebar width. That's something that's gonna be on you, but if I'm honest with you, when you go and have a bike fit in person, that comes down to personal preference and you will often be asked, how does that feel? This is not something you actually get with an app that doesn't ask you how does that feel, but if you feel like your arms are too wide, then perhaps that's something that you're gonna to have to be honest with yourself about and just admit and maybe try getting some smaller bars. Or at least try a friend's bike who has a set of smaller bars or narrower bars and see whether that's something that you quite like. 
So a peer is not actually trying to replace a bike fit. Obviously it comes in at a completely different cost bracket. It is simply trying to give you the confidence to know that you are within a certain range based on a whole ton of data that they have pulled together. So we've also learned that the body position that you hold on the bike is actually very important when you're creating your video for analysis. Try and be consistent with it. Don't one week turn up and hold a really aero position and then the next, when you do your recording, have straight arms sitting up as if you are cycling down to the shops. Try and be reasonably considerate when you are, being, when you are in your bike position when you are creating your video. That's gonna be very important. That can be on you a little bit, but obviously if you make changes to the front end of your bike, that is gonna be reflected in the numbers that you are given. But if you decide to lengthen your stem, but then completely change the way that you do your recording, obviously the numbers that you're given and then ultimately what you are told to do is gonna be wildly different. So just bear that in mind when you're trying to create your actual video before it gets analyzed. I'm also gonna say that every time I go riding with Paris, she keeps turning to me and saying that her saddle height is too high and that she does need to lower it. But she's basing that on feel. So I said we're gonna use this app just to go and check at what her satellite, saddle height is at the moment and her knee angle to see whether actually it does fit within the range. From there, we might make a small adjustment to lower the saddle, but then we'll also know what her knee angle is and whether it's appropriate to her. So that's a really good example of someone that would be able to use an app like this. They have a bike, it is working for them, they just don't feel like it's 100% or you know, 75, 80% within range of what they actually need. An app like this will give you the confidence to know that if you do make changes, they have been warranted. Do let me know if you end up using the app. I'd love to have a conversation with you to see how you found it and whether you ended up finding a position that you are happy with and comfortable with on the bike. That's it from me guys, I will see you in another video soon. Please do like and subscribe if you have enjoyed the channel and you found it useful. See you on the next one.